My dog came back after 15 years, and I wish he had it. I know, everyone always says my dog is the best, but I truly mean it. When I say my dog was the best, she was the best dog ever. She was the sweetest dog I've ever met, and she was tiny enough I could carry her under my arm with no problem. Now, when she ran away, I was heartbroken. I was seven at the time, and spent maybe half a year crying and begging my parents to stop looking for her. They both were kind enough to avoid mentioning the possibility she became unrecognizable roadkill or got eaten by a hungry hawk as they wandered the block with me. I'm in college now, but I still live at home and I don't work for the time being. I'm doing some homework in the middle of the day when I hear scratching at our front door. Our neighborhood is filled with stray animals and unfortunately, the cat a few houses down had taken a liking to my mother and decided this was his second home. I ignore it the first couple of times with the assumption he will go away just like he always does. Only after five minutes I decide to grab a water bottle and go squirt him with it. Opening the door was like opening a window to the past. She's shrunken a little more and her head is covered in white hairs. Other than that, She's the exact same as I remember her. Luna doesn't even bark or whine or even wag her tail. She just walks inside, jumps on the couch and sits down with her eyes fixated on me. I stay dumbstruck for a few seconds before reality kicks in. It doesn't take me long before I have Luna in my arms and I'm covering her with mixture of kisses and tears. The puppy that ran away was always eager to return kisses. The dog I'm holding is more stoic and simply tolerates my affection. Considering the circumstances, I'm willing to forgive her. After I'm done loving on my dog, I tuck her under my arm and call my dad. Understandably, he doesn't believe me and tells me that it's just probably a dog that looks like her. The intelligent part of my brain tells me he could be right while well, my heart tells me he's wrong for once. My eyes agree with my heart. No, I'm not claiming to have photographic memory. I'm just claiming to remember distinguishing characteristics of my dog, Luna. She's a dachshund with flaws against breed standards. She's an off brown with light brown eyebrows, a white chest, and one white sock. Her ears are too short. Her muzzle is too long, and her eyes too far apart, and finally, she has a bend in her tail near the base and another in the tip. Overall, she's not a dog anyone's likely to forget about. When my dad gets home, he's forced to agree with me. Luna is showered in more kisses and praises that she can count, and when my mom gets home, she's almost drowned in our love. It's only as we're heading to the local pet shop I realize something is off with Luna. She isn't making a single noise. She doesn't react to anything during the shopping. Barking dogs can't get her attention. Treats dangled in front of her won't get her to react. Even a shopping cart almost running her over doesn't make her flinch. I'm not sure what's causing it, and frankly, I don't care. My dog is back, and... If she wants to spend the rest of her life looking at the wall without moving, so be it. I'm gonna make sure she's happy doing it. The only real issue comes at night. I believe in sharing beds with my pets, and Luna is no exception. I've gotten her a pillow ready beside my head and place for her. 
As I was drifting off, I turned over and see two cloudy chocolate eyes gazing at me. I brushed it off as her weirdness and closed my eyes to go to sleep. When I wake up, her eyes are still looking at me. She's frozen in the same position she was when I went to sleep. I call her name and she rises. I get off the bed and she hops down beside me. Now, the next part might make me sound like a dick, but so be it. I jerk my hand at her face like if I'm about to hit her. And to no surprise, she doesn't react. I'd assume she has cataracts, but I see the way she moves around and this can't be the issue. I reach out to pull her eyelids down by force. She lets me, but as soon as I release them, they pop right back up. I can't think of anything else to do and I go back into the kitchen to feed her. I grab some food and pour it in her bowl. She eats like no other dog. Luna opens her jaw, takes a giant mouthful in, and swallows without chewing once. And she repeated this motion until the bowl was completely empty. Then she goes to her water bowl and shoves her muzzle in. I can only watch as she chokes and gags down water like a sick joke of how a dog should drink. Finally. She goes into the living room to hop on the couch and sit in her designated spot. I try doing some homework, but I can't with the way Luna's looking at me. She's just sitting with her head turned in my direction with her eyes wide open looking directly at me. If it wasn't for her breathing, she wouldn't be moving at all. I started experimenting. I walk across the room twice and return to my seat. All the time, her eyes follow me and she turns her head at bare minimum when needed. I love Luna, still. Now she has concerned me about what happened to her over the last 15 years. The next issues happen slowly. Luna would randomly wander the house, whether it's night or day, before returning to where she started. No sniffing or barking or looking. Just blank eyes gazing wherever her head turned. She'd eat, pee, poop, and not much else. Each task she did was in a robotic way. If it wasn't for us petting and kissing her, she would just be like another piece of furniture. Her eyes were the worst. She never blinked, and she never moved her eyes. If she needed to see something, she would move her head entirely. I always brush it off as her being weird, until I finally followed her down to her basement. I don't know why I did it, I just saw her go downstairs, and I decided to see what she was doing, at worst. I assumed she would go around in a circle before coming back upstairs. Instead, I found her with her head pressed in the corner and her eyes closed for the time. Quietly, I heard her whimpering. Luna? A violent jerk overtakes her as she flips back around to face me. Her eyes are wider than I've ever seen, and she's shaking like a leaf, with her tail tucked between her legs. I call her name again, and I'm greeted with a silent snarl. I take a step towards her, and she charges. The tiny dog dives between my legs with ease and runs up the stairs. By the time I get up there, she's seated in her spot and staring into oblivion. I make a point of following her down to the basement whenever I see her go, but she never repeats her actions. She'll always wait to see if I'm coming down the stairs and when she sees me, she'll rush back up. I can still hear her though, if I listen closely when she's down there. It was like whimpering first, then it became a louder whine, now it's whispering. I'm starting to hear it clearer and clearer, human-like whispering as I know she stands looking at the corner of the basement. I've done everything I can to stop her, I've closed the door, but my parents keep opening it since it's not hurting anyone. I'm afraid of the answer I'll get if I ask them if they hear the whispering. When she ran away the second time, I was almost relieved, 
until she brought me back a present. A mutilated bird, still twitching and clinging to its life. She crushed it between her jaws when I went to go get it. She keeps bringing me gifts. I'm sickened at first, but I'm not really worried about it until she brings it down to the basement. I can't force myself to go down there to see whatever she's doing. However, I can hear the whispering getting louder and louder. It stops suddenly. Then, something that isn't Luna whispers. I practically fall with how quick I run down the stairs. I'm going down when Luna runs up. I can't find a trace where the bird went. I try to tell myself she ate it, but I know she didn't. How could she? She barely touches her dog food, and when she does, she eats so slowly. I stop following her to the basement. It doesn't stop her whispering from getting louder and louder until I can hear it from my bedroom at the other side of the house. I try stopping her a few times. She doesn't care when I grab her. She'll just hang in my hands like a limp noodle. Whenever I put her down, she bolts for the basement, though I've tried bringing her food and water, but she refuses. As concerning her whispering is, I can't bring myself to starve the dog who found her way back to me. The whispers are beginning to make sense. Single words are bleeding through into my mind in the haze of muddled nonsense. The words themselves don't make any sense. Just bits and scratches you'd hear from mundane conversation. Luna's voice never made sense. But whatever thing is answering her is starting to make more sense, which is even more scary. I've looked how much the dorms and the apartments cost in the area. I can't afford to pay it, and as much as she's creeping me out, I don't have the heart to abandon Luna again. As time passed, the whispers slowly disappeared. My mother had an abortion before she had me, because the kid wasn't my father's. My sister overdosing wasn't an accident, and she knew the correct dosage. I can't stop myself now. I go to the basement with Luna. She no longer runs when I join her. The whispers say they're about to stop. I've gotten too much for free. They want me to pay like Luna does. I don't think I'm strong enough to resist anymore. I have a rifle in my closet. I've only used it in the gun range.